of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Brandon Clay, and I want to personally welcome you to the online worship experience of the Main Street Church of God in Christ. Listen, saints, it's Sunday morning, and it's time to have church. I pray today that something is heard, said, or felt that makes you feel right at home. And if by chance you're looking for a church home, I pray that your search ends today. We want to be your church family, and I want to be your pastor. Take this time right now and call everybody you know and tell them that we are on and that we are live and we're preparing to go into Disciple Sanctuary. Do your part in digital evangelism. Like and share. We're about to experience very powerful worship and word and our lives will be changed together. So let's go into the sanctuary into our service already in progress and we'll see you after service. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again today, God. God, we just want to thank you for blessing us to see a day we've never seen before. God, we just want to thank you for all many things you've done for us, God, and how faithful you are to us every morning. God, I just want to tell you thank you, but first of all, God, anything that's in us that's not like you, God, we pray that you take it out. Straighten it. Strengthen us, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. How you watched over us, God, all our life, God, and you blessed us to be at this moment. And we just bless you today, God. Thank you for your darling son dying on the cross for us. God, we won't take your grace for granted in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you, we praying that you will cover us with your blood with this pandemic that's going on, God. God, cover us with your blood, God. He's even said, by your stripes, we are healed. God, we're praying for the leaders of this country and the leaders of this church, the grand old church of God in Christ. God, I pray that you encourage your people everywhere, God. Encourage your believers. Knowing that you said in your word, you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. God, thank you for standing by us, God, when we didn't even see our way. Didn't know which direction to go. But God, you opened up them doors. And I know when you opened up them doors, you showed us which way to go, God. You even said in all thy ways, hallelujah. God, we said in all our ways, acknowledge you. And you shall direct our paths. God, we're praying for our churches, God. God, we thank you for your blood that you cover us with, God. God, even put the blood over our doorposts that that pandemic won't even come to our houses, God. You said, what can wash away all our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God, if your blood can wash us clean, God, we're praying that your blood will go down through these streets. Go down in these houses. Go down on these jobs. And wash all the evil out, God. Let your blood come in in the name of Jesus. Anoint your workers, God, in the name of Jesus. Anoint your leaders that they might go in the direction that you send them. And God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Thank you. God, we thank you for your healing power, God. Thank you. God, we just give you thank you saying all things. You said give thanks. God, we pray that you go down in the hospitals. Go down in the nursing homes. Go down on these jobs. Go down, God, in some of these houses. We don't know what all I'm going through, God. But we know that you are there. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we lean it and depending on you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you right now, God. Thank you for your son dying on the cross for us, God. Thank you for that boldness that you've given us. We knowing that Jesus is our high priest. That you're standing for us, God. In the name of Jesus. God, and I pray that you bless the servant. And we be careful to give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, good morning. I'm going to read from Colossians 2, chapter 2, verses 3, 4, and 5. And it reads, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? And this I say, least 
any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding our order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Amen. <laughs>
we declare that you are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And we bless your name.
Now is searching for answers, but all of those answers are only in Christ Jesus. And so we say, Thank God for being who He is and doing what He does because He's the only one who can help us. But if you know that God is the one who's been helping us all the time, just say, Thank you, Jesus. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what the world may say. God has always been our help, and he's a very present help even in the time of trouble. So we say thank you to all of you who are watching us online, all of you who are here in the sanctuary, to all the members of Main Street Church of God in Christ, to all of our friends and all of our family, all of our future family. We say thank you for tuning in this morning on this Pentecost Sunday um, for this Sunday morning experience. We know that there's a lot going on in our world even now, and you could be any other place, but you've stopped by uh, to tune in to visit with us virtually, and so we say thank you. But there is a word from the Lord, and I solicit the prayers today, even now, as we attempt to give to you what the Lord has given unto us. And if you have your Bibles, if you would, turn with me to Psalm 3, the third Psalm. And in those eight verses, we'll find our assignment for today Psalm 3 verse 1 through 8 Psalm 3 when you have it would you say or type amen alright I heard one that means we, we should be there <laughs> here's what the Bible says Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be would say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I waked for the Lord to sustain me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves around me, against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. Uh, for the next few moments, I'm going to teach on this subject. When life hurts. When life hurts. I struggled uh, this week with the occasion of what today represents being that it is um, when we celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost on the religious calendar serves as 50 days past Passover. And so today all over the nation, all over the country, there will be pastors and preachers preaching from the book of Acts um, as this is the birthday of the church. And I wanted to stick to the script and just preach from the book of Acts. But God didn't call me to stick to the script. He called me to speak to the moment. And when our world is in need of God's love, God's help, and God's intervention, I have to follow the leading of the Lord. And if we have been connected to the news at all over the last few days, we would know that there are many angry and hurting people in our nation. Following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, and uh, another gentleman, Ahmaud Arbery, we we'll go back and we see Trayvon Martin, Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, just so many people of color 
that have seemingly lost their lives in totally avoidable situations. And so here we are again on this Sunday morning, having to deal with the emotions that we feel connected to a senseless act of violence and murder. And it's difficult because there are many times that we have to stand in this place, in this position, and we have to speak to the emotions of people and to the hearts of people who are wondering where God is when these types of things take place. But I want to say to you that God is in the same place that he's always been. When the days are good and we have a tendency to sit God on the shelf, he's in the same place that we put him. When the sun is absolutely shining, but he's ever present with us. The Bible says that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. But I just want to tell you that if we look at Psalm 3, um, this story of David actually gives us unique insight into how to handle times in life when life is hard and when life hurts us. When we look at this third psalm, we know historically that it is a prayer that David prays as he's fleeing from his son Absalom who's trying to kill him. You can see that at the top in the pericope where it says a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. It literally gives us the definition of what the next eight verses will show us. So David is struggling with the fact that his son is trying to kill him. And we can see all the events that led up to this event. If we go back to 2 Samuel chapter 15 through chapter 18, David's son Absalom has murdered his own brother Amnon. He was banished from Israel. But at some point, Absalom comes back to Israel, but he returns with a vengeance and he declares himself king over Israel. But the problem is that Israel already had a king. It was his father, David. And to David's amazement, there, uh, there were some people that previously he believed to be very loyal to him, very loyal supporters, that they switched up on him. And they gave their support to Absalom. So now David has to flee his own throne and his own kingdom to save his life from his own son. And as David is on the run, his heart is even more broken. He's even more frustrated to find that more of his trusted confidants are now siding with Absalom and now his heart is absolutely broken. Think about what David is experiencing. He had one son that he lost to senseless violence at the hand of his other son. He has his other son who is trying to kill him currently. He has to flee his home and his throne and now people that he have trusted with his life have turned on him and have joined forces in rebellion to take his life. And so in the midst of all that David is going through, he prays to God in one of the worst seasons of his life. And the words of this powerful prayer give us insight into what to do when life hurts. When life hurts, the first thing David shows us is that whenever we find ourselves in a place where life hurts us, the first thing we have to do is take your concerns to God. Look at verse number one in the text. It says, Lord, how are they increased? Just listen to the passion in his cry. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. He says, many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Now, in order to understand David's frustration, you have to know that it's one thing to be under attack for something that you brought on yourself. But it's another thing to be under attack and you don't know why. If you've done something to hurt someone or if you have masterminded a scheme in order to embezzle money from the innocent, if you have broken up somebody's marriage or destroyed someone's happy home, then maybe you can understand being attacked. But when the attack doesn't match your actions, I need answers. So David is saying, I have done nothing to deserve what I'm going through. He says, Lord, I need you to answer me. What is going on? That's what David is in verse 1. 
by Israel's own admission, he was the greatest king over Israel. And David is saying, he says, I've done my best to be the best king that I could be. He says, I've been loyal to these people. I've been generous to these people. He says, I've done my best, not just for myself, but the entire kingdom. So my question is, God, how are they increased? Just listen to what he's saying. That trouble me. Now notice that at the end of this particular part of the verse, it ends with an exclamation point, but it begins with the word how. And so the word how would indicate that this is a question that he would be asking, but it ends with an exclamation point, which means he asks a question in the form of a statement. Because David says, I really, God, I'm not asking you this for you to give me an answer to this. He says, I'm trying to vent my frustrations to you. He says, because I've done nothing to deserve this. You said that I was chosen by you. And my question is, how could you allow all of these people to be against me? How could all of these people be troubling me? How could all of these people be after me? David is frustrated and he's hurting and his mind is blown away because he understands that in order for this uprising to be so massive and to have spread so fast with so much success, Absalom had to have had inside him. He's struggling with the fact that some of the closest people to him, Lord have mercy, that he thought that he knew. That they switched up on him and now they have collaborated with Absalom to kill him. And we can see this in the B part of verse number one when he says, Many are they that rise up against me. Notice the term rise up there. And these words imply that he says, Many are his opposers, but rise up means that their heads were originally hidden. But this situation, y'all, gave them an opportunity to show their true colors. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Their heads were originally hidden and they acted like that we friends and we together. But when this situation happens, they show whose team that we're really on. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. There's some people that you go to lunch with every day at work and you thought you knew them. But when something like this happens, the statements that they make let you know what their true colors are, who they really are and what's really going on on the inside of them. That's what David is experiencing and David is troubled, y'all, because he realizes that some of the people who were with me never really liked me. Now, he's struggling with that, he says, because I've been good to you. I've been equitable with you. He says, I, you told me secrets and I didn't tell nobody. He says, I tried to be the best king I could be. But now this uprising gave them an opportunity to rise up and show who they really are. And David is struggling with it. That's why we have people now that are in the streets and they are rioting and they are, they are protesting. And we don't look at what they are doing and condone burning buildings and burning our homes and our communities. But we have to understand that there are many young people in the streets and they are rioting because they are hurting. They're trying to create outside of themselves what they feel in themselves. And Dr. King says that rioting is the language of the unheard. And so when for years and years and season after season, you have seen things that seemingly have gone unanswered and have gone unpunished, then there are people now trying to take matters into their own hands. So David says, you have allowed this situation to show me your true colors. He says, now I see who you really are. And David says, but I'm struggling with what I see. And that's how many of us feel right now. It's situations like this that make people show their true colors even if it's how they really see color. It's when people are enraged at Colin Kaepernick taking a knee. But see, nothing wrong with an officer taking a knee on another man's neck. It's when people want Mike Vick's head for killing dogs. But see, nothing wrong with George Zimmerman killing Trayvon Martin. He was an innocent child. It's when people of privilege try to establish the parameters of prejudice. How can people who have never had to be concerned with race determine the state of racism in America? You will never see me as an African American man tell somebody what the Holocaust was or was not. In the same way that I don't want anybody that's not of the United States or American descent to tell me how I should feel about 9-11. And so therefore, when my people have been subjected 
to systemic racism for years and years and years. I don't want somebody who has not had to deal with what I have had to deal with to try to tell me how I should feel. David says, I don't need y'all trying to tell me how I should feel about what I'm going through. He says, because you read it in a book. He says, but I lived it in my life. Whenever you have been in a store and been followed by people that you had more money in your pocket than they would make in an entire week. I didn't come in here to take nothing from you. I came in the store to buy something just like everybody else in here. And so America ought to ask itself, and I'm already preaching if you believe it or not. America ought to ask itself, how would you see what happened in the George Floyd murder? If it was the other way around and Mr. Floyd's knee was on the other man's neck. How, how would you see it? How would you see it, America? How would you see the situation if the officer's knee was on your child's neck? Can you come up with a reason that it would be okay for the police to kill your child if they were not actively shooting at the police? Could you come up with a reason? Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What if the words repeatedly spoken by President Trump had to come out of the mouth of President Obama? Would you still see it the same? And the problem is, for many people, even around us on a daily basis, the guilty verdict will depend not on what happened, but who did it. And that is a problem because wrong is wrong no matter whose bones it's on. And if you're wrong, you're just wrong, and right is just right. But David said, I'm under attack from so many angles. He says, I just need to know, God, what's really going on. And that's what many of us are asking. We've been praying, we've been marching, we've been fasting. But we still see some stuff going on and God, we just need a few answers. David says, not only is my son trying to kill me. He says, not only have my friends and confidence turned on me. He says, not only, yeah, do I have to protect myself uh, from COVID-19. But also I got to keep my eyes open for crooked cops. He says, I have to be aware of racism in society, but I also got to be aware of it in my job. I don't have to just worry about a pandemic, but I also got to worry about some police officers. He says, God, I need some answers. And I came to tell you today that there is answers to our questions, and they are in the word of God. And David helps us to know those things. And look at what he says in verse number two. He's lamenting to God. He's telling God, I got some issues. I got some stuff I need for you to tell me. He says, verse two, he says, many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him in God. Now that messed, that messed me up right there because it's one thing uh, for folk not to want to be able to help you. But it's another thing to say that there ain't no help for me in God. Because if God can't help you, you can't be helped. He says, Lord, they saying about me that you ain't even going to help me. God, I need you to talk to me. I need you to say something to me. And if you would look at the history leading up to the verse, you would understand why they say what they say, even though it's misguided. Because before we get to Psalm 3, before this rebellion of Absalom takes place, David has had his fall with Bathsheba. And in that fall, we all know that David committed adultery as well as he committed murder. So there were those who believed, y'all, that David deserved what he was going through because of what he did. Can y'all believe that there's some people that look at what we have going on right now and say we deserve what we experience? There are some people who look at us and say the way the pain that we feel and the frustration we have, we deserve to have it because of something we did. But when you look at the scripture, it echoes what they're saying because in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 11, it was God who said, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And so there were people looking at David who said there was no help for him in God, not because God was unable to help him. But what they were saying is that God is unwilling to help you because they believed that David's situation was a result of sin. Now, now that makes sense for David, but it's problematic for us especially in a nation that tries to make you believe that your skin is sin. Come on, help me somebody. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's messed up when, when it's problematic when protesting makes you a protestor. But protesting why 
how you black makes you a thug. I, I need y'all to help me in through here. If I, I, if I was scared, I wouldn't have brought it. It's problematic when legally owning a gun in America is a right. But owning a gun as a black man makes you a threat. It, it's problematic when people who say they love God but support a president and policies that destroy people. And I even heard somebody say this out of their own mouth. If God really loves you, he wouldn't have let you be born black. That's a problem. But what they don't understand is this. That the Lord put his hand on me. Even before the foundation of the world. And if God's hand wouldn't have been on our people, we would not have survived all that we've been through because there's no people that have survived as much as we have and God still has a plan for our lives. So I'm glad that I look the way I do. Because what I have is a picture of who God is. Look at what David says. They thought, y'all, that God wouldn't help David because of his sin. But they didn't realize that God had already made a plan to help him by sending his son. Because if you look at Revelation 13 and 8, it says that Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Which means that before we ever had a problem, God already had a plan. And can I tell you that no matter what you're facing right now, God already had a plan before you had a problem. And so while you trying to figure it out, help me somebody. God has already worked it out. So before there was ever a pandemic and problematic police, God already had a plan and a way of escape and his name is Jesus. So here's what he says. When life hurts, he says you got to take your concerns to God. But then you got to remind yourself, come on, about God. Look, look at verse number three. Look at verse three. We're almost there. I feel some rising right in through here. Verse 3, he says, But thou, O Lord, Lord have mercy. I want you to see that it starts verse number 3 with the word but. And, there's, and, and they used to sing a song on the show that says, Conjunction, junction. What's your function? And if you know what the word but means, it means that whatever came before, we got to take another turn. So he says, Even though there are people rising up against me, Lord help me. He says, But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. Lord, I got I to gotta back up. I got to finish this. I gotta, y'all, y'all need to help. Are y'all praying for me? Are, okay, all right. He says, look at this. In verse 1 and 2, David expresses his concerns about what his enemies are doing. But when he gets to verse 3, y'all, he shifts and starts reminding himself of what God has already done. Let's, let me say that again. In verse 1 and 2, he's talking to God about what his enemies are doing. But when he gets to verse number 3, he says, I got some experiences with God myself. So I got to remind myself of what God has already done. But he makes it a personal proclamation, y'all. Look what he said. He says, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for who? For me. He says, my glory and the lifter up of my head. Here's what David says. He says, in other words, y'all said that there was no help for me in God. But I have personal experience with God. And I know by experience who he is and what God will do. And every now and then when life is hard and life hurts, you have to remind yourself who God is and what God has been to you. What has he been to you? He's been bread when you were hungry. He was water when you were thirsty. Shelter in your time of storm. He was company when you were lonely. A provider in a pandemic. And so many people doubt him. But I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. Because Jesus is real to me. Look what he says. Look what he says. He says, David says, the Lord is my shield. Lord, help me get through this. He says, he's my glory. And he's the lifter of my head. Look, look what he says. He says, God is my shield. That means that when I'm under attack... He says, yes, I'm taking live fire from the enemy. He said, but God is covering me. He said, I ain't got to cover myself. He says, because the Lord is covering me. And I'm talking to some folks that know that there were some things that should have happened in your life, but God blocked it. Uh-huh. You should have been poor, but God blocked it. Should have been dead, but God blocked it. Should have been by yourself, but God blocked it. And even I'm talking to some folks that the Lord didn't let what you did get to the public. That you told Jesus about it. But he didn't tell nobody else. He forgave you and sent your sins as far as the easiest. So 
from the west. He said, he's my shield. But he didn't stop there, y'all. He said, and he is my glory. He said, here's what I got to show you. Because the word glory means self-worth. <laughs> and David says, I want you to know that even though I had to flee my own kingdom, I had to leave my own throne, running from my own son. He says, but my self-esteem, it was never in my stuff. He says, but God is my glory. David says, my self-worth and my identity, it wasn't in my throne. It wasn't in my money. It wasn't in my gods. It wasn't in my title. It wasn't in my position. It wasn't in my relationships. It wasn't even in my name. But you may have this whole lot of love. But I'll take Jesus for mine. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He said, he said here's my shield. He said, here's my glory. But then he's lift the lifter overhead. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He says, you got to go back to the history. And you will find out that in ancient days, the king was the judge. And whenever he was ready to pronounce a judgment, the subjects would bow before the king. And if he was going to condemn you, he put his foot on your neck. But if the judgment was in your face, the king would step down off of his throne and lift up your head. Lift up your hands. Oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Here's what David was saying. God is the judge, and no matter what they may say, heaven has ruled in your favor. So when you wake up in the morning, just know that God's judgment is in your favor. He's lifting up your hands, putting you where you belong.
Because there were some people that laid down last night that didn't rise up this morning. And if you ain't thankful enough for that, understand that 370 people throughout our world have died from COVID-19. But when you laid down last night, Lord have mercy, you went to sleep and you got up this morning. And somebody said, I don't know if I got anything to be thankful. Yeah, you do. Because you laid down last night. You went to sleep and you woke up this morning. Didn't know how you was going to pay your bills, but you laid down. Went to sleep and you woke up this morning. Didn't know what tomorrow would hold, but you laid down. You went to sleep and you woke up this morning. But here's why. Because the Lord sustained you. How many of you know that he's a keeper? He's a keeper. 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 Tell your neighbor that the Lord is a keeper. against me round about. Now this is what he says. He says, 
I have confidence in God because of who he has been to me throughout my life. He says, so now even though I'm facing a challenge that's different from the other challenges, he says, I'm not going to change up on God because God ain't never changed up on me. He says, God has never given me a reason not to trust him. So therefore, I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people because y'all act like you're fighting me, but you're really fighting God. <laughs> he said, because his name is on me and he got to protect me for his name's sake. And so he says, my confidence is in God. But then in verse 7, he gives his conflict to God. Lord have mercy. He says, arise, O Lord, and save me. Now this just blessed me all together because the word save here does not mean to be redeemed. But it means to be delivered. <laughs> he said, no, he said, I'm already, I'm already saved. He said, no, no, because somebody said, I'm already saved, but I don't need the God to save me. I need God to deliver me. And deliver means to pull out of a place. To get you out of the dungeon of where you are. He says, I believe in who you are. He said, but I need you to save me. Here it is. Oh my God. See, see David got the revelation. A personal revelation that God is my God. And he said, so even though y'all said that God won't help me. He says, I already know who God is. Because this ain't my first situation I've been in. I'm talking to somebody here today who you say the reason I ain't going to worry about what's happening now because this ain't the first time I've been in trouble. But God has brought me out over and over and over and over. And so David says, I got my confidence in God. I'm going to give him a conflict to God. And here's why. He says, for thou hast smitten. Lord have mercy. All of my enemies. I know some of us got some. He said, all oh, every one of my enemies up on the, on the cheekbone. And, he's, and here's he says, thou has broken thy teeth. Because what he's saying here is, God, I don't want you to kill them. I just want you to slap the teeth. <laughs> Out of their mouth. So when they come to work Monday morning, <laughs> I want them gumming on the chicken. I, <laughs> chewing jar babies with, with the gums. <laughs> He said, no, Lord, don't kill them. He said, because they need to be saved too. He said, just slap the taste. <laughs> Out of the mouth, Lord have mercy. And then he says, you broke the teeth of the ungodly, but here where he really blessed me. He says, salvation belongeth unto God. Here's what he's saying. That deliverance belongs to God. And so since it belongs to God, God does not need a vote or a delegation. To decide whether he's going to deliver you. But he'll decide in eternity past. That he was going to deliver you in your right now present. And it'll be already done for the entirety of your life. So no matter what people may say. He says salvation belongs to God. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Now here's what it's big. Because David didn't say the blessing is on me. He said your blessing it's on your people. So God has enough grace. He has enough purpose. And he has enough power. That he can bless all of us the same. So that means if he brings deliverance to your house. He still has enough. To deliver stuff in my house. And David says that salvation belongs to the Lord. The blessing is upon thy people. And it just reminded me that the reason I ain't got to be afraid. It's because I'm saved and I'm in Christ. And I just came to tell somebody that everything is going to be alright. Tell your neighbor, it's going to be alright. It's going to be, it's going to be alright. Look across the church and tell somebody that it's going to be alright. Tell your neighbor whatever you do. Just hold on. Just, just hold on. It's going to be alright. It's going to be alright. Weep if you have to. But just hold on. Cry if you have to. But just hold on.
rejoicing because God is good. Because millions can pay. But I'm one of the ones. I'm one of the ones. accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says very plainly in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And if you want to make that decision today, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But God, today I ask that you come in my heart and forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God that he came, he lived, he died, but that he rose from the grave and by right of his sacrifice, I now have a right to the tree of life. So Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart, be my Lord, and I'll be your child. And I receive you now by faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, very simply, welcome to the body of Christ. Use the link right there on the post, click to connect. Give us your information. We would like to connect with you, get some resources into your hands to help you on your journey into maturing in Christ. If you're looking for a church home, use that same link, click to connect. Give us your information because we want to do life together with you. Now it's time to sow seed into kingdom. You can use that link on your screen, click to give. You'll be connected to our secure giving app, Givelify, that will allow you to sow seed directly into the kingdom work of the Main Street Church of God in Christ. Listen, I love you all, and I thank God for you keeping your appointment with God today and experiencing this worship and word with us together. We love you, and may God cover you and keep you. It's our prayer. Until we meet again, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to the lobby, the place to congregate after church. No scripts, no agendas, just fellowship. Join us in the lobby on Zoom at 1.30 p.m. We'll see you there. Here at Main Street Church, we invite you to join us for any of our virtual worship opportunities. Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. via the Zoom app. Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live. Sunday night YPWW at 6 p.m. via our conference call line. Wednesday Pastoral Teaching at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Join us for our morning prayer on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11.30 a.m. via our conference call line. That conference call number, 712-770-4687. Access code 644-507. And remember, we are the church that loves people.